Hello, we are gathered here today to present our Smart History Project, which is being held in the vending machine room on second floor of Grove Hall. Your hosts are Tanya Yepes and my dad Menace. Hi, Tanya. Since we just celebrated National Women's Day this last March 8th, it would be nice to talk about famous women artists, don't you think? Yes, of course, that would be great. So tell me what famous woman artist has impressed you the most. Well, the famous artist whose paintings embrace women's motherly love and rules is Mary Cassatt. Well, that is very interesting. Tell me more about her painting. One art piece that really drew my attention is titled Mother and Child, painted in 1905. One important fact to know when talking about Mary Cassatt is that she wasn't able to bear any children. However, this painting and all others emphasize the sentimental feelings between mother and child, which if you ask me is a very unique artistic talent. Wow, what an interesting fact it just gave me. If she couldn't bear children, then why would she paint portraits of mother and child? No one really knows why she painted these portraits. One would maybe think she was able to express her yearning towards motherhood. Because if you look closely enough, you can see the detail and love even through the portraits. Her paintings have a lot of emotions within. I see a mirror in this painting and where a child is reflected on. Yeah, her paintings definitely do show a lot of emotion. But I think the mirror can show how a daughter grows up to become the woman she was taught to be. If you look closely enough, you can see how the mother holds the mirror up to the child. It looks like if the child is staring at the viewer. It's just simply amazing. All right, that is just amazing. Okay, so tell me about the sunflower. Yeah, I know. Okay, so when we can see this flower does draw a lot of attention. So you know how the sunflower is known for chasing the sun? Um, yeah, sure, yeah. I've never seen flowers running towards the sun, but if that makes sense to you, yeah. Okay, it's not like they're playing tag. <laughs> The sunflower signified the family lineage, having to do with patriarchs. So the mother is not holding the flower, but in the end, the child would end up having the flower one day too. Well, now tell me what type of paint is being used in this portrait. Most of Mary Cassatt's paintings were made with oil on canvas. One thing that is pretty interesting is how the mother and daughter's faces are very pastel color schemed. Yeah, I definitely see the realism in her painting. Yeah. Another thing that is very amazing about this piece is that the color scheme Cassatt uses is very golden. You can see how everything somehow combines together. The child's hair, the mother's gown, the mirror, and the sunflower too. So what about... Yeah, yeah, okay, so. Looking at the child, her nakedness set against the elaborate dressing gown and coiffed hair of the mother, so just a blank palette, you know, those things that artists use for painting. One thing that will be filled with the mother's expectations and society's thoughts in which the child will grow up to become. Mary Cassatt seems to be emphasizing the role of which mother have to teach their children. Yeah, later in life the child will become more conscious of her appearance and how people see her, a fact that is emphasized by the second mirror in the background of the painting, which reflects both figures, mother and child. So, enough about Mary Cassatt. What female artist drew your attention the most, Tanya? Well, Frida Kahlo has truly shown me a different point of view in art. Oh really? How so? Her art is very unique because most of her art is about her life, which makes it all even more unique. So what painting is your favorite? My favorite painting from Frida Kahlo is self-portrait on the borderline between Mexico and the United States. Interesting. So tell me more about it. Well, if you see in her painting, the juxtaposition of the sun and the moon represents the ancient Aztec concept of duality, a belief that opposites such as night and day, male and female, life and death, define life. Wow, I would never have thought of it like that. Tell me more. Mexico has a long, deep history. The pre-Columbian temple acknowledges Mexico's past, a past that was integral to Frida's life and work, as part of Mexican movement. Frida, as well as other Mexican artists, rejected European traditions and looked back to their ancient indigenous roots. Fascinating. So, can you explain to me why she paints the skull dolls and roots? Yes, of course! Alright, so fertility dolls lie next to the skull. It suggests a cycle of life and death. Skulls appear in many of Frida's paintings, most likely representing Mexico's cult of the death and acknowledgement that death is unforgettable and part of the cycle of life. Frida's own experience living near the edge of death most of her life may have inspired her use of this powerful and personal symbol. Wow, it appears that all her details have a meaning to it. 
Yes, let me tell you about the earth tones, blooming flowers, and the light, fluffy natural surroundings of her homeland. Also, the electrical cords twisted and tangled along the American scenery turn into roots of plants growing across the border in Mexico. It seems that Freddy uses a lot of symbolism in her art. I am intrigued. Tell me about her gloves and why she uses steel skyscrapers. All right, let me tell you about her long gloves, which give the impression that she is ready to attend a formal tea, while the cigarette in her hand smacks the rebellion. Also, Frida uses steel skyscrapers, smog belching, smokestacks, and machines to depict an industrialized America that is remote and unfriendly. So basically, Frida Kahlo uses her art to express her thoughts and share her life in paintings. Yes, indeed. Wow. Frida stands on the border of Mexico and the United States, a reminder of her dual heritage as well as her experience of having lived in two different worlds. Frida Kahlo's self-portrait on the borderline between Mexico and the United States identifies her experience in showing how she physically was in the United States but her heart belonged to Mexico, right? So enough about feminism. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yep. So, I have a joke for you. All right, let me hear it. What did the artist draw before he went to bed? Uh, I don't know. The frame? No. He drew the curtain!